Hey YouTube, I'm at the car wash. I figured I'd do another video here because it's uh, because why not? Um, I forgot to tell you about a few things about Houston uh, metals. So while we have this cheerful music on in the background, let's talk about it. Actually, some of it's kind of fun. Uh, so uh, let's talk. Uh, your moms get a bad rap. They every time somebody's got autism or any kind of disorder, um, moms always you know, get the, the flack, you know, oh, you didn't eat right for your pregnancy, or, uh, you know, women need to be really careful and take care of themselves, or what about the dudes, right? Like, the dudes should have some responsibility, and, and it's actually so, it's kind of cool. Um, so, one of the things about yeast, um, and uh, your microbiome and everything, I hope you can hear me over this music, but uh, <laughs> anyway, let's just talk about it like this. Um, your microbiome uh, it is um, seeded when you are born through the mother's birth canal. So, it, gross as it might sound, guys, this is nature. Uh, so, you know, buckle up, buttercup, let's, let's get serious. Um, so when the baby is passing through the uh, birth canal, it swallows the microflora that the mother has in the birth canal. And guess what, guys? Um, how do I put this? Uh, I remember one guy telling me one day, um, if God was so smart, why did he put the amusement park next to the sewer? You know what I mean? So, actually, that was super smart of God because uh, the sewer system is actually seeding uh, from the father to the mother and back. You know, and back. Um, well, okay, the father's sewer system is seeding the mother's amusement park. Does that make sense? And then it's the mother and the father's microflora that the baby is uh, swallowing that's seeding their their gut. Um, because before that, the baby's um, the baby doesn't have any bacteria in its in its intestinal system and in its gut or anywhere else. It's it's in a pretty pristine environment. So uh, guys, if you're drinking too much and, and having too much yeast or, or not eating well. Uh, you bear some of the responsibility too. It's not just about your DNA. Your microflora has a ton of um, a ton to do with what happens to that child of yours. So uh, let's all get healthy here, huh? Um, so when we're talking about your microflora, a few things to note: um, if you are trying to prevent autism in your child, guys get healthy, ladies get healthy, and make sure that your microflora is good. Uh, start eating a probiotic, better yet, um, and for autistic kids this is actually really crucial. Um, we used to, you know, our, our ancestors used to eat fermented foods of all kinds. Every nationality has their fermented foods. You know, for Indians it's lassi, um, yogurt for Europeans and, and South Americans, and there's uh, fermented foods in Germany, um, fermented vegetables like sauerkraut. Uh, there's kimchi in um, Korea, so everybody has their fermented vegetables and fruits and um, kippers in London. Uh, so you know it's it's it was pretty standard until now. The Western diet and uh, you know all this fast food and, and not really eating the way we used to anymore has made it difficult for us to keep that microbiome healthy. So um, <laughs> so so. Uh, here's a trick to it. If you need to buy it, just make sure it's it's as natural as possible. Yoplait's not going to do it. You need some some real bacterial cultures in there. So like places like Whole Foods and uh, markets online. Uh, better yet, a, a you know a dude in the country that's selling his wares. Um, if he has keeper, if he has yogurts or anything like that that's fresh and, and not pasteurized, you're going to get a, a good bang for your buck in the bacteria realm. For the bacteria. Um, another thing is you can make your own. Uh, here's the trick to it: if you're going to get anything fermented, um, kefir is actually more yeast oriented. Um, all of these probiotics, like you hear about kombucha um, and how good it is for you, and that's not necessarily true. Um, if you have too much yeast in your diet, you don't need to add more funguses, and kombucha is a fungus. Conversely, if you have too much bacteria in your diet, you don't need to add more bacteria. You need Funguses, so it's all about keeping the balance. Um, so.
So just remember that. It's not cut and dry. There's lots of different strains of bacteria that you have to have in, in your body processes uh, or for your body processes to take place. So um, do yourself a favor and do that stool test I told you about yourself and your children to make sure you know what it is that you're lacking so that you know how to feed it appropriately because you don't want to go adding something that you already have enough of and not getting, you know, crowding out what you already are deficient in and ending up with less. So um, the trick to a lot of this fermented stuff, um, if you do have yeast, um, an overabundance of yeast, which most of us have these days just because of the prevalence of antibiotics and uh, both prescribed and also um, in meats and, and milks and our food these days, uh, make sure that you don't have vinegar in your fermented foods. Um, there's lots of places you can get um, just salt and water preserved uh, vegetables. If you think about it, um, we had such a great system before because you know the times of the year where your immune system would be low, uh, because the gut is the, the majority of the immune system, right? Uh, if you watch Activia commercials, it says 80% you know, of the immune system is in the gut, and it is. And so that's why you want to make sure it's it's your microflora that are that are dealing with your immune cells, um, and telling it what to do and how to. Well, you know your immune cells are reacting to it, uh, but it's essentially the communication between your bacterium uh, and your yeast and your gut, your your microflora and your uh, immune system that that makes you healthy or not. And for the most part, that, that that's eighty percent approximately, according to activity commercials. Anyway. Um, so make sure that if you get fermented vegetables, any kind of sauerkraut, um, kimchi, whatever, it's just salt and water, there's no vinegar in it. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you're dealing with a yeast issue, um, also make sure there's no metals in those things. So there's an ingredient called alum, A-L-U-M, and that stands for aluminum. Yeah, there's aluminum in your food. Uh, pickles, uh, those melty cheeses. Um, the uh, baking soda has it, baking powder has it, so make sure you're getting um, aluminum-free stuff. Um, and then even cooking on aluminum and drinking out of aluminum cans. Anything acidic, uh, like cola, that touches aluminum, even coffee that's run through an aluminum filter, make sure you have a paper filter to make, to, to make sure the acid in the coffee doesn't touch the metal. That's why filters are important in coffee, you know, if you have like a metal. Uh, filter basket um, and then if you're gonna cook with aluminum make sure well I wouldn't recommend cooking on aluminum you just to trade your pots and pans uh, cook on glass cast iron um, yeah, limited stainless steel but aluminum is like a real bad thing and so are Teflon and all those other um, fake uh, you know lined lined with chemicals kind of stuff that's gonna give you problems so anyway, that's a little bit more about yeast and uh, the microbiome and metals. Oh, and um, when we were chelating Holden, um, as the yeast was dying off, we got this stuff called Candex that was really awesome. You have to use it away from food, um, otherwise it's going to tear you up. Um, but it kills, it eats away at the yeast. But while the yeast is dying, it's producing more alcohol, so you go through something called a, a healing crisis where you get worse because there's more alcohols happening while the yeast is like, ah, dying. Um, so we use this product called Enteros Gel. It works a lot like a charcoal, activated charcoal and a bentonite plate. And so uh, it, it absorbs, it kind of goes behind. Um, the, we use the Candex and the Enteros Gel together so that while the Candex was killing the yeast, uh, the Enteros Gel could mop up all the um, alcohols being produced by it because he was climbing the walls, you know, with when he was just getting the candex. He was, we thought they were going to call CPS on us, he was screaming so bad, and uh, it just completely calmed him down. So, you know, we had, we had dealt with the yeast and now we were chelating it, made the yeast worse, and now we had to find a way to like alleviate that for him while, while he went through the chelation process. So, in Terra's gel, um, they used it in Russia after Chernobyl. Uh, for the radioactive um, fallout victims, and uh, also they tend to use it for a hangover cure because it's mopping up all the alcohol. So if you have a hangover, a Amazon has a bunch of enteros gel you could use. Uh, you just have to make sure you take it away from food. Anyway, that's my last two cents. I'm going to go get my car. See ya.